Greetings and salutations, friends. So, we recently got a new video, and as promised, I will be doing my lore video. In this particular case, we will be looking at High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer, quite possibly the angriest dwarf to have popped out of a dwarf woman for many, many centuries. In fact, this title is only disputed by the likes of Gotrek Gurnis son and the legendary Grumbrinald. Precious little is known about the old dwarf Thorgrim. Unquestionably, this is down to shoddy record-keeping worthy of a grudge, and not, in any way, down to the fact that the powers that be over at G-dubs concentrated so hard at making him as broken as possible and as expensive as really possible on the tabletop, that they completely forgot to write the bloody lore. As such, pretty much all we know about the Venerable Old Dwarf comes from the older editions of the Dwarf Army books, released in a long, lost time, when GW had not completely forgotten how to business. Onwards to the point, though. The miniature version of Thorgrim was spawned by an unknown, presumably female, dwarf, presumably married to his father, Kurgan Ironbeard. Another bit of shoddy record-keeping there, but we do know he is part of the royal clan Duras Clad, or Stone Armor, and holds court in the greatest of all dwarf holds, Karas Akarak, a fastness of such solidity that it has never been breached and many, many have tried over the years. The Hold is also the resting place of the Book of Grudges, known by the dwarves as uh, the Damas Kron. And you really can't have a video about Thorgrim without mentioning the Great Book of Grudges. And this is no mere book of paper and leather bindings, this is an item of considerable runic power. In addition to the rather handy enchantments of endless pages, it also keeps blood from breaking down and vanishing, a seemingly pointless superpower that the High Kings decided to make use of by writing the grudges in their own blood. You know, just to make it personal. The current High King is the only dwarf that is allowed to write in the book and to cross out grudges that have been successfully avenged. A handful of people and dwarfs have been allowed to see the book, although this is exceedingly rare. This later task, though, of crossing out grudges is one that Thorgrim takes a very special kind of pleasure in, and he pursues the grudges in the book with a fervor not seen since the War of Vengeance. He has a particularly solid hate boner for a goblin by the name of Warlord Skarsnik, who at this point holds the title for most times entered into the Great Book of Grudges. And just to summarize though, I've mentioned this before in the Dwarf Lore video, but in case you're new here, these grudges can be virtually anything, from something so simple as a missed payment that requires monetary compensation, to minor theft and burglary that might be uh, solved with the exchange of goods, money, these kind of things, all the way up to murder and assault and just violence between the clans or between the dwarves and other races, which can only really be solved by violently murdering the offending party. The question should be asked, however, why does Thorgrim have such a ferocious interest in righting the wrongs of the past? Of course, the obvious answer is that he's a dwarf, and forgiveness is not in their nature, or, by the way, in their vocabulary. The dwarf language includes no words for forgiveness, but it makes up for this with a wide variety of words pertaining to vengeance and retribution. However, I would argue that that is not quite the full picture. Thorgrim has, for a long time, had a theory that the book and its magical properties is linked to the dwarf race as a whole, and that the more entries in the book, the more buggered the dwarfs are. He views the book almost like a weight around the soul of the dwarf race, and reasons that if he can strike every last grudge from its pages, the race will be able to regain their former power and prestige. 
and the book certainly is magical, so there may very well be something to this theory, but whether or not he is correct about its magical powers really doesn't matter for much, as Thorgrim is clearly quite determined to restore the Dwarf Kingdoms to their old glory, whether the other kings want it or not, and after all, if he is somehow able to strike all the grudges from the book, his people will assuredly be better off. So, he's got nothing to lose by trying, has he? But, Arch, I hear you cry. Who cares about that crummy old collection of vengeance porn? What the hell is the deal for that massive ass throne he is always on? Excellent question, you discourteous humans. <clears throat> Hiking Thorgrim is never without his favourite chair, the aptly named Throne of Power, an incredibly powerful magical item that is said to be linked to the fate of the Dwarf race. As long as it remains whole, the Dwarf race will remain. If it is ever to be destroyed, the Dwarf race is assuredly doomed. And, by the way, when I say he is never without it, I mean that quite literally. The throne is carried by four exceptionally brawny dwarfs that follow him around wherever he goes. It is also tradition that the High King should never sit down anywhere but on his throne. This, I imagine, leads to some minor problems when it comes to sleeping, as a chair of gold can be said to lack some of the comforts of a proper bed, but as we all know, the dwarves are a sturdy folk and would not be hampered by such minor inconveniences. I would, however, dearly like to know how and where he takes a shit, as if it works like I think it does, it would lend a whole new air to the word throne. It would also lend a whole new meaning to the rune of eternity that is worked into the throne, because there is no hole at the bottom of the official model. And on that brown note, I will be wrapping up. Thorgrim is probably the one of the four total war leaders we have the least solid information on, so I hope you will excuse the brevity of this video, as um, I don't really have that much to go on. He's a dwarf, he's angry, and he would very, very much like to kill all of the goblins. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm somewhat limited in my storytelling capabilities here. So, until next time, which will hopefully be Grimgor Ironhide, one of my favourite characters within the Warhammer universe, I have been Arch. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.